It's taken just half an hour to check our passports and visas four times and send us on our way. Three hours to Budapest, tracking the Danube across the northern plain of Hungary. Running through a flat landscape that still bears the scars of its history. This is the poor end of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, fought over and bartered in a score of European conflicts. In the last war, levelled in punishment for not knowing what side it was on. And always, the railways were destroyed, because military men, at least, know how important they are. Rebuilding has been a slow business, because Hungary had little help. Its new masters had long memories and saw the advantages of a generation of poverty. But eventually, business sense prevailed. They didn't have to like the West to trade with them, and trade needed trade routes, the access to markets that new lines through Hungary provided. Tourists like us are a bearable inconvenience too. We bring hard currency, and if it's necessary to woo us with the frivolity of flowers and a glass of wine on the table, then so be it. We'll be made welcome, unofficially. At Kaleti Station, our terminus in Budapest, the rules will be bent a little. The hand of state enterprise can't entirely cover the fact that this is a capitalist city, a city that just can't be persuaded it's not part of the West. It's not surprising. Families have shared Vienna and Budapest ever since the old extravagant days of Austro-Hungary. It'll take more than a new line on the map to break the habit. The government has given in. Austrians no longer need a visa to come here. Mojar Alam Bosutok, the Hungarian state railway, brings them from the border in their thousands. They come to buy food that's cheaper than at home. The story goes that the Viennese used to come here for their Viennese sausage. They come now to stay a while with the other half of their family and grumble together about this or that new Russian interference in their lives. And that's another thing they have in common. Neither the Austrians nor the ordinary Hungarians count the Soviet Union among their friends. It would be to forget their history if they did. But the people of these twin cities that straddle the Danube recognize that state control for all the faults of the people who wield it has its advantages. And nowhere are they more clearly seen than in the plan for transport. Buddha and Pest can boast a truly integrated transport system. On the foundations laid by Hungarian private enterprise, because after all, Hungary was in at the start of the age of railways, the state has provided cheap, efficient travel for the people. Railways outgrew the financiers who conceived them. They became the great levelers, a socialist ideal. If we travel a little further, six or seven kilometers into the forest above Budapest, we can find the nursery of that ideal. Children run the pioneer railway, learning to be Hungary's railwomen and railway women of the future. It's important in this society, too, to know how to run the trains on time. 
Úttörő vasutas pajtás vagyok, az úttörő vasutat úttörők irányítják. 1950-ben indult meg az úttörő vasút. A ide jó tanulók kerülhetnek 10 és 14 év között. Ha valaki továbbra is itt akar maradni, itt maradhat ifiként. A vasutas pajtások közül sokan választák hivatásukként az, a vasutat. The people of the new railway. So are we too late to catch the generation of steam that we came so far to find? Almost, but their tracks led us to another frontier, on a reservation up near the border with Czechoslovakia. There they were. Dinosaurs grazing. Beasts from the mythology of railways still a potent reminder of past endeavors. But no mainline train is entrusted to them now. They'll shunt freight into a brief twilight and then be allowed to go cold. It'll fall to the enginemen of Hungary to damp down the fires of European mainline steam. But when they do, it'll be with the conflicting sentiments of nostalgia and practicality experienced by men of the same breed in Doncaster or Crewe. Hát ez nagyon dolgoztam 30 évig, nagyon szerettem, nagyon a szívem nőtt. Te tekintettel látva, hogy modernizáltunk, újabb dízelmozdonyokat kaptunk, eleket is szeretni fogom. Természetesen könnyebb lesz nekünk a munka vele is, hát azért szeretem meg a dízelmozdonyokat is. Hát én sajnálom egy kicsikét a gőzmozdonyt, mert abban nevelkedtem, abban nőttem föl, és most már megöregettem, így most már én úgyis nyugdíjban megyek, és a dízelek fognak most már jönni. A dízelek a jobb kényelmesebb, Mind a gőzös, ugye tiszta a munka, hát azért hát ezen is kell járni valakinek, mindig ki nem járhat a motorra. traveled a thousand miles to be with them at the end. On the way we saw many of the successes and some of the failures of the railways that replaced them. We found some countries passionate about railways as never before, and we're returning to a country with less resolve. We knew this was an image living long after its day, but we also knew it was worth seeing it before it faded for the last time. If we travel this way again, 
Many more modern parts of the railway networks may have disappeared as well. There's already a new generation of European railway design. Out of the factories come trains that, like intercontinental jets, put real speed into travel and take every other scrap of pleasure out. Perhaps then we'll long for a reminder of the gentle Cisalpin. Perhaps we'll wish we had a moment to catch breath at Zurich, but the landscape was more than just a blur. But then it won't be so bad. Whichever way the trains go, we can still use our imagination.